This was a highly requested video, so there's no time for a skit. Let's just get started. So, writing isn't easy, and if anyone tells you otherwise, kill them in your book. Don't kill them in real life, please and thank you. My point is, all good writers, and I mean really good writers, find writing hard, but they keep at it, and that's why they are good writers. So, if you want to be a good writer, you can not slack off. Slacking off is what leads your writing to come off as amateur. Most writers who slack off make five specific mistakes. And I'm going to talk about them so that way you don't fall into that trap too. Number one, you describe too much. When I read a story by a newbie writer, I often find this mistake. Now, it's okay to make this mistake or any of the others I'm going to mention, but it's also vital that you don't keep these mistakes in your writing. Writers who describe too much usually have lengthy exposition, non-stop world building, and too many details about their characters. Not only can we picture the characters down to the location of each of their freckles, but we also know what all their outfits look like. And none of that is necessary. In the end, you want your reader to be immersed in your writing. And they can't do that if they can't imagine your character the way they wish to perceive them, and are instead too fixated on your too detailed outfits. Long world building that requires reading volumes and volumes of thick books just to understand what your world looks like is pretty lame. Sometimes writers tell me they're on their 20th chapter of their world building outline, and that just about stopped my heart for 5 seconds. No reader is going to care about your encyclopedia. I mean, even Game of Thrones, which is full of world building, isn't even like this. Just because you like world building doesn't mean you should make it dreadfully long. So long, it's lengthier than the actual story. Get to the point and world build in a natural and balanced way. This will also help cut down on all the unnecessary exposition. Also, avoid having your characters ramble in their thoughts. If something can be delivered in a short sentence or two, don't turn it into an entire page, because that's just filler. Number two, your subplots overpower the conflict. Subplots are fun and even important. I mean, they help us get to know our characters better. They help us fall in love with them or hate them, but they can't be the main focal point of your story. Your main conflict should never be pushed to the side to make room for your subplot. The subplot should be in the foreground of your story. Often, newbie writers get sucked into the fun of writing subplots that they end up with half their book about two friends fixing their friendship when the main conflict is about a serial killer on the loose. Know what to prioritize in your story. If you like the subplot more than the conflict, you might just be writing the wrong story. Number three, your setting reads like we're in an empty cardboard box. I know I said don't describe too much or do too much world building, but the same applies to the opposite end of the spectrum. Don't do such little describing that your reader doesn't even know what to imagine. Are they in a small town, on Mars, inside a dungeon? They might as well be in all those places. Your reader has no way of knowing. So when you describe, give the necessary details to help guide your reader. But then let the reader do the rest with their imagination. Number four, there's too much unnecessary dialogue. I see this all the time in amateur writing. The writer gets carried away, usually with a subplot, and then we have five pages of non-stop dialogue that if we took out of the story, it wouldn't even make a difference. But there's an easy solution for this. Cut out all the fluff, especially when you start editing your story. In real life, we have awkward small talk because we're awkward people, but you shouldn't carry that into fiction. Small talk is never exciting and no reader will be impressed by it. Just concentrate on writing natural dialogue that moves the story forward. That should always be your goal in writing. Number five, your plot has a million plot holes. I mean, some plot holes are inevitable and you can work them out, but amateur writing is where the writer slacks off and doesn't even think half the plot through. Things magically happen and we never learn why. People go missing and we never know what happened to them. Even the main conflict doesn't make much sense, but the writer didn't stop to figure it out. They wrote on and now the entire book is a jumbled mess. So whenever you have a plot hole, try to think it through and definitely have it figured out by the time you start editing. Because there's nothing worse than a book that just doesn't make sense. 
So those are the five ways that your writing might come off as amateur. I hope this video helped. And be sure to let me know in the comments what other mistakes do you think make a story come off as amateur. And before we go, I just want to give a quick shout out to Sarah Frank from my shout out tier over on Patreon, as well as all my other patrons. Thank you all for your support. And if you haven't checked out my Patreon yet, definitely make sure you do so because I have some awesome exclusive content just for my patrons. And don't forget to follow me on social media for some awesome writing updates. And remember, North for President!